Hello, welcome to the artclasses.com. Today I am going to show you how I paint or color Colossus. So if you want to know how to draw, there's a video previous before this uh, show you how to draw Colossus, which I use Sketchbook Pro. And then now I bring it into Photoshop and uh, paint Colossus on top of uh, the line work. So if you want to download my brush, uh, just go to my website, uh, theartclasses.com. Also, there's a digital playing, uh, the digital painting for beginner playlist on, if you click on the top right icon in the corner, then you'll find a bunch of playlists that might be useful to you on how to color and how to start in Photoshop and all that crap. Um, also, you can take my digital painting class, digital painting 101, uh, it's for uh, beginner or even if you are, you've been using it for a while, you probably be pretty useful. Everyone likes it. And there'll be also be like one or two, one or three class, which uh, I'll announce it later. Just go to the link and you'll find them. Also, uh, I guess, uh, let's just get started. All right. All right. So we bring the drawing from uh, Sketchbook Pro into Photoshop. So um, it, I think the default setting in Sketchbook Pro is save as PSD file. So it's a Photoshop file anyway. So um, you bring it in and I separate uh, these two layers is already those are line layers and I have a background layer and then I'll make another layer in the middle for me to paint and then I'll paint on top of it again so as you've seen in the video so uh, if you want to download my brush I already announced that right I think uh, go to my website and download it and as for the palette they just a uh, JPEG file um, you know you just I just make up my own palette so anyways and if you want to know more about painting then click on icon and then you find it. so all right first thing i do i make a layer in between it and i'm just going to select the outline and i'm just going to fill in mid gray behind it but i have to make sure i clean up all this access selection I'm using lasso tool So lasso two, um, if you press all or control, control I think uh, shift would be add and all would be delete. So I press up and it delete the access. Anyway, lasso two is my friend. It's pretty useful in painting. So you can use a bunch of tools to help you paint, not just the brush. But uh, the painting part is one fun part. Uh, all right, and then I feel the mid gray. So there. And then um, I'm going to make his vest darker. So I'm going to make another layer on top and I make a selection again. And the reason I make a selection so I don't paint over the line or I don't paint over the outline. And yeah, I'm just going to make the selection. <laughs> just fill it in a little faster. Whichever way can make my job faster, I usually go that route. So I want his, uh, the head part and the arm part is going to be metal, so it's going to be lighter and the rest of them are just going to be leather or dark leather, so it's going to be darker. Um, Alright, just lasso two, lasso two, lasso two. And every time I paint, uh, you probably notice like, oh, he used a different way to paint all the time. So there's so many ways to paint. It's, it's not the matter of what you use or what opacity or how many layers, it's the matter of knowing what to look for and how uh, to make the proper value onto your character. So now I have the darker uh, value onto the body and the pants and the boots. Alright, so now I'm, I'm zooming out and the reason I'm zooming out is because uh, I'm trying to find the lighting or light and shadow because light and shadow is probably the most important thing in painting. Without light and shadow, you wouldn't have any form. So I'm going to use soft brush first and use a dark layer. And uh, oh, I just forgot that the outline was kind of red. So the outline kind of pop up. So I'm going to take care of the outline first. I'm going to make it really dark, maybe 9% darkness. Okay, so it doesn't stand out as much. So it just blends into the dark. So I make both outline kind of almost black and then I tone down the opacity of those outline because eventually I'm going to get rid of them unless you're trying to ink it 
oh and this is I make another layer in between and soft brush about maybe 20% gray so these are all normal layer and if you've seen my other tutorial like Deadpool or Batman before uh, you know that I use a different method to paint this this one I use soft brush normal and now I use eraser and erase some part that should be hit by the light uh, like some of the arm and part of the arm so the light is going to be coming from uh, front a little bit via right side of the screen so eraser and then I pan it back in the shadow because that's the side that might not that will not get the light and then another side eraser create some sharp edge for the shadow and light so now you can see a little bit of form going out so uh, you gotta alternate between soft edge and dark edge to make your form looks good you can't always use a soft brush because you're gonna make everything look too soft, soft and then um, the, the form will not show up without the both soft edge and hard edge so you have to kind of use both so now I'm erasing part of the pants and trying to make it lighter but that's a little bit too light so now I'm just gonna use 30% erase and kind of erase there just to have a little bit of differentiation between light and shadow but it's still pretty close the value is still pretty close together and you raise some light on to that chest uh, the chest is a little the lighting on the chest is a little off which I will fix it later uh, and then some shadow behind his head so as you notice the shadow is on the left side and the light is basically on the right side but it's not totally from the right right it's up front and a little right just so just just angle a little bit there and more shadow on to the left side just think of it as a you know block of cube for each part there so I have the light setting and now I'm gonna add some hair color which is dark hair I'm, I'm, I kind of wish I could do accent I'm gonna do Colossus accent right now that's kind of cool um so uh, I told I Turn down the pastel on the outline again, trying to look for because I want to be able to see it so I can paint over it uh, so I can move it up and down. But the outline doesn't really matter, it's not going to be in the end result, uh, just going to be there to help me uh, paint of which part I should put the shadow or which part I put the light. So now I paint, I pick the color from or pick the value from um, the chest, the darker value, I just paint over on the same layer just to get the more consistent and sometimes. A lot of people ask me about how you know how come sometimes when they paint they get really muddy color I think because you have to paint with high opacity to get the color right and right now and to paint with low opacity but if you use hard edge brush usually you get a more consistent color now I'm adding some light onto the arm and on the face on the nose now on the deltoid so now you can see like I when you paint you have to think of it like uh, you're trying to uh, sculpt something and giving it some form so now I'm adding a little lighter value on this metal and when you paint metal metal and cloth or fabric are totally different things so if you look at it right now uh, you see more value range or more range of gradient on the arm and on the face because those are going to be metal so it's going to have a wider range of value and or wider range of gradient value means you know like a gradation or the range from dark to light and also and um, if you look at a, a fabric on the cloth it's have less range but you know cloth usually absorb light better so it have less range so now I'm using a level to kind of increase a little bit of contrast and control the dark control the light a little better and I'm just making a copy of what I what do I just made and name it level two. Oops, I merge everything all the way down. I shouldn't. Uh, I should merge everything down except the outline because I want to keep the outline separate so I can turn it off. Uh, okay, need to redo this a little bit. Sorry. Okay, so now I separate the outline out. All right. So I merge everything else down that I paint, but I keep the outline basically. So from there to there, I merge it down, and the outline is still out there. So if I turn it off, I can see form. So you, when you paint, is the point is to make your painting looks like without the line, basically. Because um, it's a lot faster now that you don't, unless you want to 
have an inker or you want the ink, then uh, th those are totally different work, uh, different uh, styles. So uh, you are probably on the wrong channel. Um, we just I just paint basically. So now I'm adding more shadow. Um, I hope you follow me here. I just like I just talk everywhere. Uh, but if you watch my tutorial enough, then you should be able to get it. But there'll be a tutorial, you know, you can click on the top right corner and you will get uh, a basic Photoshop tutorial. And uh, this video is going to go about probably 30 minutes or something. Um, now I'm painting occlusion shadow inside those arm. And if you want to know more about painting, you can always, you know, download my premium tutorial. Or better yet, you can take a class with me. Uh, it's a group class, Digital Painting 101 or Digital Painting 102 or Character Design. Uh, click on that icon, you'll find it, scroll down. And I'm using Eraser to getting more shape and adding more shape onto the character. Alright, uh, now I make another layer on top of everything. So now I'm just going to start painting over the line. And, uh, and as you can see, I uh, lower the opacity on the line a lot. So now you can see, barely see the line. And you notice I'm still painting from far away because I just want to arrange the value um, and make sure that all the values is right first. Because when you paint from far away, far away, you can see slightly better. So I'm just cleaning up the color area. Uh, some trap muscle and then collarbone. So usually in between your, your collarbone and your trap muscle, there's a hollow spot that you're that's why your spine kind of pop out and become your neck. Cleaning his uh, pecs a little bit. Adding some shadow in the back of his deltoid. Uh, a little bit more shadow on the other side of his bicep. So right now, basically, uh, the best light and shadow is already there. So now I'm trying to make the material pop out a little more. So I go, went back to the base layer and I used dodge to dodge out some highlight for the steel or metal material. So as you can see now, it's kind of pop out and almost look like metal. And then using a dodge tool for the face. So I just kind of trying to find a value, like how far I could go for the highlight. You just have to keep going until you're like, okay, that's enough highlight. And then if as long as it looks like metal, then that would be cool. And if you never paint metal before, you're probably going to have to experiment a lot. You're not going to get it the first trial. Um, so I've been painting for years, so. So it's okay to make it and it look like metal. But if you try and it doesn't look like metal, don't worry, um, try again. Don't get discouraged. That's the thing. Just keep, if you love doing it, just, you know, always keep doing it. And one day you're going to be super awesome. And I flip, flipping is good. So you know what's wrong with your drawing or your pinning. Um, like right now, I think there's a problem with the shoulder, which I don't think there is, but I still think there is anyway. Sometimes I just always find something wrong. So I want to make his traps a little bigger. So I paint over. And try to make his square jaw a little more square. You can see there's a different uh, value that going. So I'm gonna make the side of the face kind of slightly on the shadow side darker and a little lighter on the front side. And like I say, this one is not gonna be realistic. It's just gonna be kind of, I'm going after like cartoony a little more. Then some more shadow in the eye socket and uh, alongside the nose bridge. So usually at this point, if you notice, all my opacity is like 100% because I already have enough value around there uh, within the painting itself that I can just use a color picker and adding paint over. It just, uh, don't try to like render too much or like glaze over or blending you need to have hard edge and soft edge and know exactly where 
uh, to put the light and where to put the shadow. So basically, the plane as the plane change on the form, then the value will change. And you have to be able to kind of know where uh, if there's an ab abrupt change on the object, then you're going to have a harder edge. And if the change are smooth, then you're going to have a softer edge. And also, the, it's also involved material, what kind of material you are, uh, the objects are, like if it's matte or if it's glossy, if it's chrome or if it's metal, what kind of metal, what color, you know, there's uh, all kind of uh, those things will add up to your equation. So now I'm just trying to make his face look slightly better. And you don't really need to zoom in until you like, if you want to refine it more. But at this point, there's no refinement. You don't need to. Uh, it's still pretty rough overall. Nothing is done yet, so there's no need to zoom in. You just need to. Uh, kind of look at it from the distance so you know exactly uh, if the lighting is wrong then at this stage you will know all right so both of his arm kind of look like almost like metal and you got a little bit of form on the body by if you look at it there's only like two or three different value on his uh, body and his pant. Try and tweak his neckline and a collar. And then I decided to erase it when I first start painting it more. And then I might, I should make some edges on this sleeve on his vest. So it looked like he's actually his arms going inside. All right. So there. And moving up the other shoulder a little bit, not shoulder, but the traps or the muscle behind your neck. And add some pattern onto his costume or, or his top. I'm going to add some X there to his uniform. Actually, it's a uniform, it's not a costume. Costume is what you guys wear uh, because it's not your uniform. <laughs> okay, so that's the X. All right, and I'm gonna add the zipper right there. Then some occlusion shadow in between his vest and his around his shoulder and neck or collarbone if you want to be specific uh, more occlusion shadow yeah at this point I didn't use any texture brush yet so everything is from my default Photoshop brush and if you wonder how my brush is flat, it just basically, if you go to a round circle default, then you just squeeze the brush and you have this brush that I'm using right now. Just basic default. So now I'm adding uh, his contour line of the metal part going around the neck. There we go. Adding some highlight, make it look a slightly a bit more metallic. And when you add highlight, you don't have to like uh, add so many. Like what I'm doing right now is this tiny little spot. When you add tiny little spot, 
with really light value, then it make it pop out slightly more. You have a wider uh, of the super highlight, then it it won't pop. You have to be. It's kind of like when you want to, uh, the the lighter part of the paint, then you're gonna have to paint the lighter part if you want to show up. Then you have gonna have to paint it on on top of something that's darker, so it will pop out a little bit more. If you overexpose it, then it won't it won't be special. All right, adding a little bit of highlight onto his fabric, and the highlight on the fabric, if you notice, it's a lot less light than the highlight on the metal, but it travel the light travel around along the same spot so it's kind of like you notice the lines kind of line up the highlights kind of line up all the way from his uh, the part of his fabric on the top to the highlight onto his shoulder so so light travel in uh, sort of like a, a specific order Like I say, if you want to know more, um, then you can go watch more video on my channel, download premium tutorial, but better yet, you can take uh, Zero Painting 101 and you learn more. And I will tell you all I know, if we have enough time. Alright, so now we're adding more um, contour line onto his deltoid. And if you see, I draw the line. I didn't draw the whole line. I just draw the part that are in the shadow. And the part that has a light, it has a lighter line. And now I'm using a little bit of texture brush to give it a texture. Because I think the Colossus in Deadpool movie looks pretty damn awesome. And it has a nice texture on his metal. It doesn't look too glossy. It just, the metal look like, it looked tough. You know, it doesn't look, it doesn't look like fancy chrome or anything like that. It looked like it could take the beating. That's the kind of metal I want. Yeah, some metal, some metal, um, metal are not made equal. Some metal look tougher than the other. And Colossus metal in Deadpool looks really tough. All right, so doing the other side of the arm. I hope you guys are not falling asleep because I am uh, listening to myself. I'm falling asleep. <laughs> it would be funny if I'm recording and I actually fall asleep and let the video run quietly all the way to the end. All right. Okay. Not sure what I'm doing here. I mean, I do know what I'm doing, but I'm not sure. All right, add more line onto the dark. The, the dark. Uh, and if you notice, like in the dark part, I would have darker line, and as it comes to the light, I will leave. I will not draw the line on that part that have the light, it, or if I do, it's going to be lighter because that's uh, it. The when it's in the light, it's not going to be dark, as dark. You can have the line, but it has to be lighter. So now I'm drawing contour line onto the arm, and if you see the contour line shift or change direction as it go onto the bicep, so uh, this contour line will kind of help convey the form or the muscle group, right? Now I'm trying to add a little more silhouette onto the each part of the line, which uh, eventually I kind of take it out because it looks a little, I don't know, it looks like it's trying too hard, so you just have to kind of, I mean, a silhouette is really important to make a silhouette look good, but uh, when I start making that, it just doesn't it just doesn't look as good as I thought it would. So sometimes I eliminate them. All right, it's a little crooked, but it's okay. More contour line, and you see this contour line will run all the way to his. Uh, forearm and if you see when it's come for shortening then the direction change then his contour line become closer because of the perspective so see it end up deleting those edges it doesn't look as good as I thought it was on the shoulder all right a little bit more highlight on the edge of those line to kind of create a sectional 
mm, for metal. So you know, a little bit of really hot spot highlight, just tiny little bit. Try not to do it all over the place. So it pop out a little bit more. And then I flip. Zoom out again, flip. Then do more line. Uh, I'm gonna change some of the line here. Make it a little more consistent. Uh, by what I mean by consistent is the distance. Um, distance between the line. And as it come to the forearm, then it change direction, then it's kind of curved, come to the forearm, so it become closer. See, it's got closer in the perspective. And now it's kind of conveying that it's, this line's coming up. And I'm gonna start to do it really quick now, uh, onto the other line. We're gonna finish this up. Probably gonna take maybe, I don't know, nine more minutes, I don't know. And more control line to the forearm. So see this contour line will help uh, showing what the form is, which direction is going. And same thing as what I'm doing to the finger here, right? So now it's on the thumbs, it was like going cross section to X and Y and then it's going the opposite way. So on each part of the knuckle it's going the opposite way. Like this one is going curved um, to the left and then on the other end it's curved to the right. So it depends on which direction of your object is facing, then this contour line is going to follow that and it's help conveying. Now, you know, it looked like a blob before. Now it looks a little more like, uh, okay, those fingers are going on the right direction. Now I'm going to use a lighter color. Let's see. I'm going to pick, uh, wait, I'm going to make him a little more, I'm going to make him frown a little. Make him look a little more serious. Like this is for real, man. Adding a little more value, make him look a little more realistic, but it's still not realistic because it's stylized. But when you add a certain part onto the face, it make it look more like a uh, real face. Like you know that part on your uh, from the nose to the to the edge of your lips or your cheek, and fix the other eye. So we're almost there. Ta-da! More highlight onto his fancy hair. I'm gonna fix his hairline a little bit. Uh, move the sideburn down a little lower, and the side, and then uh, bringing his forehead in a bit more. There. I'm going to erase that part behind it slightly. Alright. So I'm going to pick the lighter part and I'm going to add some light onto the fingers. Highlight on this index finger, then the thumbs. And you see those highlights are laying up on this, uh, about like the same, pretty much the same direction or the same line. Because light travel in specific order. Highlights. And if you draw the line, they are the line that are connected. What was light? There we go. A little bit more on the thumbs. So now we got a sort of a beat up metal. Now it's time to add some color on it. Add some red using normal. Yeah, you you know sometimes you see me use overlay, sometimes you see me use some other um, modifier layer, but you know those are not really necessary. Uh, what you need to know is you need to know how to paint basically. Um, add a little bit of shadow, and once you know how to paint, it doesn't matter what tool you use. Uh, any digital tool would be easier than traditional because. There's no undo in traditional, but if you know how to paint, uh, whatever tool you got to, you know, you'll be able to paint no matter what. You can use different programs. They're just tool. 
All right. Clean up some line, adding more occlusion shadow. Adding a little bit more light onto the edge of these sleeves. Okay. I'm going to darken that part a little bit more. Yeah, some darker value. Yeah, it's a little bit too dark there. So like within the, you know, uh, those values look pretty close, but it can make a difference when you putting the light in the dark, like what I'm doing here. Picking a darker value and trying to add shadow. It doesn't have to be that much contrast, you just have to uh, fit. Little value goes a long way. And do the foldings. Uh, use bigger brush it's better. Add more uh, light to the uh, ring finger and pinky. Clean up the boots a little bit, adding more light. And light will show up on the toe, shadow. You see those, uh, those are three different value. And I mean, even if it, it might not look as much different, but it's make a big difference, even though the value are so close together. So it's give it a more subtle form. It doesn't have to be as contrast as the arm, uh, because in reality, if you have a black boot, this, the values ain't, are not going to change. But, and plus, you have to uh, when you have fabric and metal, you have to tone the fabric down and to make the metal look more metallic. Um, so yeah, there's a material study. So yeah, in a character design class, we have a, we will study all the material study and how to like design certain character and how to paint. But I recommend Dito painting one on one first. And I will be personally hand on teach you how. All right. Okay, I'm making another layer. So this is going to be the final. I'm going to add a uh, rim light. Oh, but that's uh, I need to darken the area first to be able to add the light. So let's see. I'm going to darken that part a little bit more. Then add the rim light on there. Trying to make a, you know, his deltoid, giving more muscle group onto his deltoid. But I think I started off on the wrong foot, so I'll probably have to delete it and start it over again. Use dodge to bring it up a little more, but it doesn't, it, it look weird. So I you eliminate, erase that, and start it all again, darken it up a little bit more. And add a bit of rim light that comes from uh, the angle below a little bit from the different direction. So rim light at the end first. Yeah, when you when I want to add light, I usually try to prep the area to be slightly darker mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. And then I'll add the light on top of it. So rim light on the edge of his deltoid and a little bit more to break up the muscle group inside the deltoid. And try set, and then add the rim light onto the forearm and onto his hand, his fist, and the rim light onto the ring. I mean, the finger, and add a little bit more light there. So now you can see the rim light. Rim light is basically a bounce light that reflect, and usually. If the object can reflect the light really good, you have more rim light than the object that absorb the light. But that's why uh, it doesn't have that much on the clothing. But I will add it to the clothing a little bit so the rim light comes from the bottom of the bottom direction on those fingers as well. Adding a little more, erase some, add some more. And I'm going to add a little bit of rim light on to the pants. And then we are done.
There we go. So this is just a really quick digital painting tutorial. Uh, it's about 30, 40 minutes here. And if you want to know more, you can always download my premium tutorial or you can take the class with me, a digital painting 101 or character design, whatever you fancy. Um, yeah. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and there will be more coming. Um, please like the video and subscribe um, and feel free to comment down below. Do you request whatever you want to request? what kind of character it is uh, I'll put them on the list and uh, now I fix up his head a little bit here and there uh, some shadow occlusion all right so yep we pretty much done here so so here's the final painting of the Colossus and um, feel free to download the brush from my website I have the link uh, click down below to the uh, download brush or the full post of if you want an image. Also, like I said, there's a premium tutorial you can download, it's only a few bucks, and also the group class deal painting. Just let me know. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and have a great weekend. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.